Hi there and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at how to use touch inputs in Bolt. So I'm going to continue with the project that I've been doing so far and most of this project I've covered in the tutorial videos. So if you're interested in any part take a look at those video. Currently our game uses keyboard inputs. You can see the keyboard controls right here. So we have the get axis and the logic for the input is right here. So we use a variable here and the purpose for the variable is to smooth out changes in the inputs by using lerp. So for touch, Unity actually has a touch system and the touch system has lots of options that we can use. But to test the touch system, you actually have to use a device that has touch. Either you'll need to use a Unity remote on your device so you can send those touch inputs to Unity or you'll need to export it to your device and test it that way. But some basic implementations of touch can be done using the mouse system. And the reason behind that is because if we look for mouse touch, we can see that there is a setting set simulate mouse with touch. And right here at the bottom, it says that by default, this option is enabled. So by default, any mouse logic that we add to our game will be simulated with touches. And in this video, we're going to set it up for a mouse, but the setup will add the ability for the touch to work as well. So let's take a look at mouse. And the one that we're looking for is get mouse button. Now what get button does, it checks the button. So zero will be the left button and it sends out a true or false if the button is clicked. And for touch, this will be simulated as a touch on the screen. Now what we want to do is use a select node. And for a select note, if the mouse button is not pressed, we're going to default to listening for the keyboard inputs, the horizontal. So we'll add the connection from the get axis to false. So if there's no mouse input or touch, we're going to use the keyboard input and connect that to the our lerp function. And this way we'll be able to use either the keyboard or the mouse with the mouse having the priority. Now, if the mouse is pressed, what we want to do is get the position of the mouse. And we can do that by looking for get mouse position. So get mouse position that returns a vector three in our screen space. So Z is going to be zero, but X and Y are going to be based on the resolution and the position of the mouse. And to make it easier for us to use the positioning of the mouse, we'll need to convert it from screen space to viewport points. Let's look that up the screen to viewport point right here. And the other input that we need is the camera. So we can select the camera by clicking this icon right here and select the main camera. The output that we'll be getting is from zero to one on X axis and on the Y axis. And that helps us a lot because that's closer to what the horizontal input gets us. So now we need to convert from zero to one to negative one to one. And what we can do first is get the X axis because that's what we're using. And then we want to shift a value back by 0.5. So subtract 0.5. And now the values that we get is from negative 0.5 to 0.5. So to get the range from negative one to one, we can multiply the output by two. And that will give us the desired value from negative one to one. Connect that to true. Let me exit the full screen. If we click play now, we can control the tractor with using our mouse. So to get that full 30, we have to swipe all the way to the side. And that's probably not what you'll be looking for. That might be too much of a range for swiping to turn maximum. And we can decrease the range that is required to get a maximum turn by changing the multiply value. So instead of 0.2, we can say multiply by four. And that's going to give us a value of negative two to two. But we still want to get the value from negative one to one. And to get the desired value, what we can use is what's called a clamp. So it's a math function clamp right here. And in here we can pass in the minimum value, which is negative one and our maximum value, which is one. And the output we connect it to here. So now whatever the multiplier returns, the output is never going to be outside this specified range, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now I can click play. You can see that we have more sensitivity to our mouse input. You can adjust it how you want for the feeling that you're going for. 
So that's a basic setup for a mouse and a touch. This setup will work on the phone as well. If you run this game now on a phone, the touch input will be converted to a mouse input and this logic is going to be running. If you still want to switch to using touch instead of the mouse button, you can do that. And the only things that are going to be changing are the inputs themselves. These two nodes are going to be replaced with other nodes. And I actually can show you that. Let's look for touch count. So right here, get touch count. And if there is a touch present, then the value here is going to be greater than zero. The reason why you need to get the touch count is because Unity supports multi-touch, so you can have more than one finger clicking the screen. So we need to use the output count and check if it's greater than zero, and that returns the boolean, which we can now use to replace the get mouse button. So we can connect it to the select node. Now we need to replace the get mouse position. Now let's try to find touch position. So right here we have get position for touch and we can use that output for our screen to viewpoint. Now this touch get position needs a touch object input and we can get that by using get touch input get touch right here. And that's it. Now we replace those mouse inputs with a get touch input instead. The only way I know that you can test the touch inputs is by using your mobile device. I'm currently connected to Unity Remote on my device. And when I click play, I can use the touch input from my device and it'll give the signal to Unity. But the other way you can test it is by exporting to your device and running it that way. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, click on the like button and I'll see you in the next one.